welcome back to The Breakdown Tech. Today I'm going to be talking about how to choose the CPU for your gaming PC. Now obviously your system needs a processor, but how do you go about picking it and, and what budget should you look for and how much of your overall budget should it be? Like what do you, how, where do you even start? Well, I'm going to be talking about all of that in this video. But before we get on into it, be sure to check out the first link down below, thebreakdown.xyz slash Amazon. If you go through that link and buy any processors, anything on Amazon, it does help support the channel. So if you find value from this video or any of the other videos out there, please go and buy through that link. Anything you buy on Amazon because it does help support us. Thank you very much for doing that in advance. Nevertheless, let's get on into the video. So I would recommend when you're building a gaming PC to kind of start with the processor because what processor you have is it going to dictate the motherboard and the RAM and all that stuff. You could also start with a graphics card, but I don't like to do that personally. I just feel better starting with the processor. You may feel better starting with a graphics card. Either one is a good place to start. But when it comes to the processor, what do you need to do? Well, first off, you need to decide your overall budget. How much are you going to spend on your entire system? If you want a solid budget build, I would suggest $500 to $750. However, if you want a competent bang for your buck, overall well-performing system, you're probably looking at the $1,000 to $1,500 range. Both of those price points and kind of everywhere in between has all sorts of great options. So after you've got your overall budget, you need to decide how much of that you want to spend on your CPU. I would recommend somewhere between 15 to 25 percent of your entire budget on the CPU. So if it's a thousand dollar build, somewhere between 150 and 250 dollars towards your CPU. For example, on a 700 dollar build, a Ryzen 3 1300X would make perfect sense at 126 dollars, which comes out to be, I think, about 18 percent of the price of the build, right there, kind of in the middle. As a rule of thumb, if you're going with Intel, you're probably going to be somewhere between 20 to 25 percent of the total build cost on your CPU, and if you're going AMD, it's going to probably be in that 15 to 20 percent range. Nothing wrong with that, it's just AMD's products are a lot cheaper than Intel's when you look at uh, the same performance. So that's why that would happen. Now I do want to mention this 15 to 25 percent rolls for gaming systems guys, not for overall editing systems or streaming systems or something like that. Editing and streaming systems are going to actually be built processor heavy because you need more processing power than you do in a gaming PC. So once you've decided on the percentage of budget that you're looking for, we need to decide whether or not you want to go with an AMD CPU or an Intel CPU. Now I have an entire video dedicated to this topic. You can check it out at the I up there. But I'm not going to make you go watch that video. I would recommend watching it because it goes a lot more in depth than this does, but just kind of skim the surface. Intel typically has better gaming performance because Intel has better single core performance when compared to AMD. Most games don't even use more than two cores max. Most don't use more than one. And because of that, single core performance is extremely important and that's why Intel is better at gaming. However, AMD really has stepped up their game in 2017 and 2018. 18 with the new Ryzen processors and stuff. So those are good at gaming as well. But if you look at it on paper, Intel is still just a bit better on single core performance, meaning it's going to be better for gaming. For budget builds, AMD is probably the way to go. You're not going to notice a huge performance difference. You're going to be able to game and you're going to be paying a lot less money. However, for higher end systems, Intel is going to be the one for you because they're going to have marginally better performance in gaming. So that's basically a general look at the Intel AMD debate. I'll I would again recommend checking out the eye up there to uh, see the in-depth video on this topic, but that hopefully helps you kind of decide which one you want to go with, AMD or Intel. So you figured out your overall budget, you figured out what percentage of that you want to spend on your processor, and you've decided whether or not you want to go with Intel or AMD. Now it's time to actually narrow down our options and see what uh, we have to offer. I would recommend going to a site like PC Part Picker, linked down below, and then filtering it to just AMD or Intel, whichever one you wanted to go with. Take the overall budget of your build, let's say it's $700, and then multiply that by 15% and multiply that by 25%. Then on the low end, you're going to put 15% on that $700 build case. That would be $105, and you're going to do 25% as you the most you want to spend, which would be a 
$175 on a $700 bill. Doing this should narrow you down to five or six different options. From here, you need to figure out which one is the best. So how do you do that? Well, we've got to ask a few more questions here. Do you want to overclock? If so, pretty much everything in AMD's lineup at this point is overclockable. However, if you're looking to overclock an Intel processor, you're going to be on a K skew, right? So it's going to be like the 8700K or something like that. That's what you're going to be looking for. However, on AMD, pretty much everything's overclockable, so that's cool. Next, you need to look at core count and clock speed. In today's CPU market, when this video is made, you need to get a four core if you're in that hundred dollar plus price range. I mean, most people are going to be buying in that price range, and so you need to get four cores. You might not necessarily need four cores for gaming, but they're affordable at this point, so there's no reason to not get at least a four core CPU. Whether it be from Intel or AMD doesn't matter, you just that's how many I would look to go for. In regards to clock speed though, this is going to vary more. And overall, a 3.2 gigahertz base clock speed, whether it's AMD or Intel, is going to be a enough for gaming. Usually the higher the base clock the better, but keep in mind that the higher the base clock the more power it's going to use and the more heat it is going to produce. So sometimes a lower base clock, depending on what kind of case you're using and things like that, can matter. But if you're just going into a well-cooled case, the higher the base clock typically means the better processor. I can already hear the comments blowing up, blah, blah, blah. I know that's not necessarily always true, but if you're just getting into PC building, you can use it as a general rule of thumb to build your system. Now, once you've decided on a clock speed, let's say 3.2 gigahertz and a core count for cores, you should be down to two to three options, somewhere like that. So let's look at price as our final factor. Going back to that original rule of the processor being somewhere between 15 to 25% of the total cost of your build. On the AMD side, look for something about 18%. On the Intel side, probably about 22% to kind of meet yourself in the middle to where you're not overspending on your CPU, but you're also not underspending on it. Now, this isn't going to work 100% of the time, but it's going to give you a pretty good result. For example, a Ryzen 3 1300X from AMD pairs great with an NVIDIA 1060 6GB graphics card. You add in all the other parts and you should come out around $700 for that bill. Coincidentally, that Ryzen 3 1300X is right in the middle of our build at about 18% of the total build cost. That setup would allow you to game great at 1080p, max settings on pretty much any modern game, with medium settings guaranteed on any modern game, and the bottleneck is only 6%. So yeah, that is a great build using this method to choose the processor. Now just a quick side note on fans, if you're not overclocking, the stock fan that comes with your CPU is most likely going to work. However, if you are going to do any sort of overclocking, you need a custom cooler. You need an aftermarket cooler, which is fine, I would recommend the Cooler Master Hyper 212 Evo. I've got that link down below on Amazon. That, if you look at reviews and everything, is a great budget option. This isn't sponsored or anything like that. Literally, I've used that cooler twice. I love it. I use it in my daily drive system, okay? There is no reason to go with anything more than that if you're just doing basic overclocking. If you're wanting to break records and stuff, yeah, sure. But for air-cooled overclocking, that is going to be probably your best option. But do not overclock with a stock fan, guys. It's not going to end well. So there you have it. You've now got your CPU. Next week, I'm going to do GPUs and then hard drives and then power supplies and motherboards and cases. I'm going to be doing all of this, guys. So be ready for basically be able to choose all the PC parts you want yourself after watching this video series. Now, I do want to say I know there are a ton more factors that you could consider. I didn't mention boost clock. I didn't mention... I know, I know. But here's the deal. This is for beginners. If you're mentioning all that stuff, you've probably built a PC before or you've watched hundreds of videos on building PCs. However, if you're just getting into building systems, this will allow you to build a great system with a great processor by watching this video. I mean, I would even make the argument that most people watching this video probably won't even overclock their system. I bought an overclockable processor with my first system and did not overclock it. The reason? I didn't know how and I thought it was risky. See, I know now it's not necessarily, but back then when I was barely making it by with buying this system, I 
did. So yeah, that's the thing. So anyway guys, I hope you did enjoy this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel for more awesome tech videos exactly like this every single day of the week. Also, share this video with your friends if they're looking to build a gaming PC. This is a great way to start, a great way to encourage them to do that and say, hey, look at this video. This is how you can choose a processor and start getting rid of that overwhelm that comes with building a computer. Anyway guys, my name is Nick, this has been The Breakdown Tech, and I am out guys. Peace.